Hey, this is Kerbal Space Program, and I'm going to build a rocket and get it into orbit as fast as I can. I'm not going to use MechJab, and I'm going to try to use uh, only vanilla parts. Uh, so this is a fresh build. I haven't tested this build yet. Uh, this is going to be completely straight out of my experience with Kerbal Space Program. So it's not like I have a something memorized that I'm doing. I'm just going to build something that I think is going to work. So, let's see. I'm just getting into orbit. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just do a small sized craft for orbiting. And let's take one of those on. And Okay, we need the decoupler. Uh, oop. Ow! Oop. Yeah, it's a little tricky sometimes. All right, copy, copy, let's see. Uh, is that going to be enough? Let's stick uh, two engines underneath. Uh, I'm going to need to... Mm. Mm. Uh, okay. the CG. CG's right there. I like to stick the radial decouplers on the CG if I can. Keeps it a little more stable when it's on the launching pad. And I attach these things. These are huge. Oh! Ah! There's a bug. Okay. Yeah. That's another bug. There we go. Okay, all right, I have to place, place these down here. Um, about four. Can we do four? Or no, this is three. Let's just do three. Do three like that. It's front. Okay, now we need struts to keep it, uh, you know, keep it, keep it together so it doesn't fall apart when it goes up in the orbit. Okay. Uh, like that. And let's see. And for the hell of it, let's stick on. Now, see, here's where I run into problems, some danger here when I'm using. And I've got a bunch of parts mods in here. I've got different sizes of fins and stuff, but this medium one is going to be as closest to. Uh, Vanilla as I have, I think. I think. Actually, it looks a little bigger than vanilla. What's the small size look like? Is the small too small? Yeah, it's closer to vanilla size. Okay. <coughs> uh, let's see. Oh! Uh, need parachute so I can get back to the surface. Uh, let's see, do we need RCS at all? No, I'm not going to use MechJab. This is going to be all vanilla. I need ASAS. That's going to be important so I can control those fins. Um, let's stick on some RCS thrusters. We want those centered on the CG. Symmetrical, please. There we go. And that means I'm going to need RCS fuel. Uh oh. That's bad. There we go. Uh, yeah. Monoprobe. And now that the CG's changed, I have to readjust where my thrusters are. Okay, that looks good. All right, that goes on. Uh, let's see. We are ready to rock. I just need to put on. Oop. These thingies so that I can actually not explode. At least that's the plan. Okay. 
Pesky, pesky, pesky. Okay, staging. Uh, okay, so we've got main engines here. We want those to be on the first stage with the SRBs. And I also want these things to decouple at launch as well. So then to just review the radial decouplers, we've got, that's going to, next stage is going to separate the SRBs when they're spent. I'm going to need to manually activate that because I'm not using MechJeb. And so in this linear decoupler is that thing, and at the same time I'm going to move this down. And that same stage should activate the engine as well, so I don't need to manually do that. And then I think just for added precaution I'm going to separate that parachute from that stage and stick it on top. Okay, all right, this is as simple as it gets, although, no, it could be simpler, but oh well, this is more fun. All right, let's go. How long did that take me to build that? A couple of minutes? Uh, load time. Come on. Okay, so the idea is to... Uh, get up to a certain height, and then uh, I'm going to want to do my gravity turn, which is going to allow me to gain lateral speed. And so the the question is, when do you start that? Um, NECJEB will will take care of all that for you. I mean, you can set what altitude you want it to go at, but uh, I'm going to aim for 10 kilometers, or probably just as soon as I separate those SRBs. So uh, everything good to go. I oh, Okay, we're not good to go. We need some pre-flight here, so I've engaged the SAS, which is my flight computer, and throttle up so for the main engines. And go. We are off. Okay, so I'm going to go straight up, and I'm going to rotate a little bit here so I can... Oh, no. Disengage that I need to rotate so that uh, I'm actually going to be facing the direction I want to go by the time I turn. Also lines up those SRVs in a certain pattern so that when they decouple they don't bash into the, the rocket. Okay, coming up on 2500 meters. <clears throat> SRVs are almost halfway spent. Pretty good. We've got Lutzel here in the cockpit. I was hoping for Jebediah, but I think he's off on another mission somewhere in the solar system. About to hit Mach 1. It's uh, 342 meters per second. That's not counting airspeed, that's surface speed. Okay, I'm going to watch this, and when that hits zero, I'm going to bash the space key so that it decouples those things. And then I'm, I'll be past 10,000 meters, and I'm going to kink it over down the 90 degree heading. There you go. That's the way. Nose up. Oop. Okay. Oh, not turning fast enough. Not turning fast enough. This is bad. I just don't want to go out into space. I want to actually get into orbit. So I need to turn in order to do that. And I can't do that when I'm about to run out of fuel. Alright, what's my apo? Uh, yeah, that's rising pretty fast. I need <laughs> to get down here. Hello? Alright, RCS. <laughs> this is we're way behind schedule here on our gravity turn. All right, this is better. Oop. I should have didn't should have did my gravity turn while I already had the SRBs on. Ah. Okay, and lock. Er, it's working hard. I'm about to run out of fuel, and I'm going to transition over to this other vehicle, and it's going to go a lot faster from there, because it's a smaller... Oh, 
It's a lighter mass. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, stop. <laughs> what are you doing? Rocket, stop. Uh... <laughs> I think I screwed the pooch here. Alright. 90 degree mark. It's an apple. Alright, that's... Pl yeah, alright, I'm done. I don't need... I'm not done done. I'm gonna try to... circularize this. So that I have... Whoop, ah! Wrong thing. Okay, set up my maneuver node on the apoapsis, which is T minus two minutes. And... Whoop. That's good. I need to find my maneuver node. There it is. That was quick. I was already pointed that direction. And once I'm on it, I've got a little bit of torque control without using RCS, so that's okay. Once I'm on the dot, allow my ASAS to kick in, and it'll keep me pointed in that direction relative to the universe. Uh, it's not relative to the planet or my rotation. It's it's absolute. Uh, oh wow, We're real close to something. Was that the stuff I already? Okay, yeah, that's just the debris that got me up here. This is coming up. Ah, oh, it's way far away. Okay, so burn is one minute fifty-three seconds. I want to initiate my burn uh, just after the T minus sixty-second mark, so I can try to ensure that when I'm halfway through my burn, I am at my apoapsis and I am not starting my burn when I'm already at the apoapsis because all of my burn is going to be after the apoapsis and I'm going to be fighting gravity from then on out, which is not ideal. So we've got about 20 seconds before I'm going to have to initiate this burn. And so the way that the maneuver nodes work, they give you this information here to do uh, you know, set up your node and they'll tell you how much time you have before you need to start it and then how much burn time you have and then also how much delta V you need to expel uh, or actually spend. And that's quite a bit of delta V for this little rocket. Now we'll see if uh, I have enough fuel to do that. I would have to do a lot less if I had uh, been able to get that uh, nose pointed closer to the horizon sooner. Normally, uh, mech jeb will uh, will uh, kink it over around the 10. Or you, you basically you want to start your gravity turn between 10 or 20 uh, meter, 10 or 20,000 meters. Same as kilometers. Oh wow! I need to not talk and actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, all right. I'm behind schedule again. watch this here. So the blue is our current trajectory. Oh, it's going to be fine. I'm starting at a really high altitude, so I'm not going to have a, com a perfectly circular orbit. It's going to have a little bit of eccentricity to it. But It'll it'll keep Lidzel from falling back into the atmosphere, and we'll probably get around the planet once before deorbiting. So I've got, uh, you know, I really wish this nav ball would give me more information, like what my inclination is, you know, like degree marks here around the horizon. It's nice, but not nice enough. It could be better. lock that gimbal. Not that it's being overused. I normally just get in the habit of locking the gimbals on uh, my rockets at this point. Because usually, if, if I'm using mech jet, uh, it'll often overcompensate all the time and just get really crazy. and will often fail, but more often than not, if you do it manually, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. Because you're smart enough to know that it, your rocket being co totally out of control is going to be a bad thing. Okay, and I'm going to pull back.
back on the throttle a bit and ease myself into this orbit. We want that to be zero meters a second. Yeah, and that's getting all crazy too, so that's all right. Just going to ignore that. Oh, yeah, that was it. Cool. Uh, how about that? You just watched me get a rocket into space. I have gone to space today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, quite a bit of fuel left over too. Spent a lot more than I would have liked it this on for this stage, but hey, uh, I'll take it. I can play around with spinning this guy around. <laughs> Turn on the ASAS and it stops it using the gyroscopes on board. The thing about the ASAS is that once it stops, you want to disengage and re-engage to it because it'll always try to reorient itself to when you had uh, started it. So, okay, I am in space. Let's try to land back at the KSC. So I'm going to set up a maneuver node about and then focus on the planet. About 90 degrees. I'm going to start my burn about 90 degrees for my target. As far as the orbit is concerned, again, it's not a perfectly circular orbit, so that's okay. I'm just going to play around. So, I want to consider a couple of things here if I'm going to be landing on a target. I'm going to consider the rotation of the planet and also the amount of. Um, Velocity I'm going to lose from the atmosphere, which is also going to change my uh, my or change my trajectory and where I'm going to eventually end up landing. So uh, I'm going to aim for yeah, about right there to land back at that because it's going to end up by the time I loop around, it's going to be over here, and that atmosphere is really going to uh, do a lot of braking for me. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to shoot for that. Disengage S -A, A S A S and spin this around over to my maneuver node and lock it in. Now I'm safe to warp. Ooh, yellow. Okay, warping. I'm going to watching this uh, node in T minus 22 minutes. It's going to go down really fast. I'm doing time acceleration. A lot less delta v to to, uh, to spend. So that's the prograde vector that's just went past that yellow marker on the nav ball, and it's going to go around to the retrograde marker or vector node, whichever. Uh, what's he doing? It's a little freak freaking out a little bit there. That's okay. Okay, three, two. It and go a little faster to catch up to the Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm not gonna worry about having it, I'm just gonna start it at the zero, T minus zero. I'll give it one second though, because it's because of the time it takes to throttle up. And throttle back down. Cut. Nope, going back up. Okay. Alright, we've just successfully put ourselves in a... That was our deorbit burn, and now we're in a suborbital trajectory aimed at the KSC. So, uh... Let's see. Oh, what the hell. <laughs> Alright, no going back now. There it goes. Let's 
Let's see. Should he mm, put the viewport towards the planet? So we can look out of it. No, nothing there. It's in darkness. Okay, so we can get an idea here. I want to remove this maneuver node. And so it's going to take us nine minutes to get over here. So this was a pretty high orbit compared to what I normally do. It's usually between 70 and 100 uh, kilometer orbit. I'm going to do a little more time acceleration. In fact, I'm just going to let it go. I'm not going to watch it because it will go down. Uh, it will automatically go back to uh, one. Uh, or one-to-one -one real time because there are different varying speeds that it will actually it'll force you to go at because of it just would take too much CPU to calculate it certain all the physics happening at that type of speed so as soon as it hits the atmosphere it's going to go to one and then I will do my descent I'm watching it here so this is going to be real close I think I'm going to undershoot it Obviously, I didn't do any uh, changing in my inclination at all, so I'm going to not land at the KSC exactly, but I'm going to be close enough for, you know, those uh, recovery crews to come by and pick up this guy. Not that there actually are recovery crews. Whoa, we've got other debris up here. What's that? What the hell is that? It's this thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> What was that? I don't remember that. Just wave on by. It? 88 kilometers away. Oop. Got to turn off ASAS. <laughs> and we're going to see this thing start to angle into the breeze here as we start to kiss Atmo. Because there is a little bit of uh, windmilling effect going on here. It's going to turn into the breeze, so to speak. It's going to wobble a bit. We'll see some re-entry effects, but currently in this build of KSP there is no actual re-entry heat. It's just the pretty orange glow effect that's going to happen. Yeah, just skimming the surface. Nothing for uh, Ludsil to do here, but wait. Let's see, I see, we're facing them. Whoa. What do our instruments tell us? <laughs> All right. There we go. Stop that shaking. It's our atmosphere indicator right here. What does that do? Nothing. Sometimes these buttons do things. Throttle up. There's no engine on this pod. Pretty stark pod here. Oh, I hear some re-entry effects. So yeah, as we start to break, our trajectory is going to shrink, uh, shorten up here quite a bit, and we'll watch this apoapsis come down. We'll probably be landing right here, right at the edge of the mountain range. Are you sitting here? That dot right there is the smaller moon around, uh, and oh, there goes our, uh, rocket part. part. Yeah, speed slowing down. Guy's freaking out a little bit. KSC is right over there. The uh, Kerbal Space Center. So, let's see, at around 5,000 meters, I'm going to 
Actually, I'm gonna deploy it now. It's gonna have this drogue effect. Slows us down a little more, but it won't actually deploy until we're much lower. The developers were uh, kind enough <laughs> to make uh, the parachutes work at any altitude that you land in. Because the atmosphere does change exponentially at the higher up you go. It's not based on... the parachute deployment isn't based on uh, atmosphere de density at all. It's based on your actual radar altitude to the surface. Which is 500 meters. And I know this because I've done this many times before on other occasions. I just decided I'd fire this up and record a, a blitz video on KSP since I haven't really uploaded anything like this yet. Kind of demonstrate some of the basics. Watch that meter right there, that was the, the G-force meter, it spiked and then it went back down. There's a long, soft float to the bottom. So we'll speed it up. Oh, that's weird, there's some weird shading happening there. Six meters a second, that's kind of rough. Alright, <laughs> he did a little dance there, we landed. Yay, yep. Alright, time to do EVA. We made it. Hooray. Cool, alright. Thanks for watching.